Hello everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Architecting with Google Cloud. As a child, I remember how I used to get sad about not finding my favorite chocolate in the grocery store near my home. Now making the product available at the right time at the right place is still one of the fundamental challenges retailers across the globe are trying to solve. Imagine a technology which can help you quickly identify out of stock items in a retail store and replenish that stock with minimum disruption, ultimately helping you grow your business. Sounds amazing, right? Well, that's exactly what our guest today is trying to solve for their clients. I'm Manish Kumar, a customer engineer at Google Cloud. Welcome to the show, Vijay. Can you tell us a bit about who you are, what's your background, what you are doing at Infinite? Well, first of all, uh, thank you, Manish, for uh, inviting me here as a part of your show. Thanks to Google. Uh, a bit about myself. I finished my PhD in computer science around 2012 timeframe from IIT Bombay. And then I joined IBM Research Labs where uh, I was one of the first engineers to work on IBM Watson AI platform. Uh, and then after a short stint at IBM Research, I essentially started with Infilect. At Infilect, um, we are building one of the first enterprise SaaS platforms for CPG retail, where uh, we help our customers to make sure that their um, out of stock and overstocking problems are essentially resolved. What we are really building is what we call as a thermometer and a thermostat, which means it helps our customers uh, to measure and control their in-store on-shelf inventory. So we work with the likes of PNG or Kimberly Clark or uh, PepsiCo. And what we help them with is really to help them understand if their products are kept at the right place in the retail stores at the right time and uh, displayed at the right price or not. And we do that uh, by equipping their sales reps with a very simple to use mobile application where they go to the stores, they take photos, and from those photos, we extract a lot of information about what kind of SKUs are placed where, are they placed at the right position, and that helps these sales reps to fix out of stock and overstocking issues in the stores. Today, we have uh, customers across over 16 countries. Uh, we track anywhere between uh, 200,000 to 400,000 stores across the globe. And we process over 25 million photos each month. So that's what we do as a company. Wow, that's amazing. Thanks for sharing those details. Now, this is not an easy problem to solve. How did you first think about it? Well, uh, when we started Infilect, we actually started with a different idea. Our initial idea, what I call as a bold adventure, uh, we embarked on a journey to build a B2C platform or a B2C application. So our initial idea was to create a destination for end consumers like you and me, uh, where you get the experience that's between Pinterest and Amazon. So if you go to Pinterest today, you see a catalog of photos, um, photos from fashion or home decor or lifestyle. And when you go to Amazon, you basically see uh, products that you can shop. Um, so what we felt was that a destination which is in between is a missing, which means you can shop from pictures or videos. And that's what we embarked on to create where consumers can just take pictures or the input pictures from any of the social media platforms and they get to see the products that they can shop. Um, that adventure didn't really last for too long for uh, various reasons, but essentially we discovered that consumers were taking photos inside the uh, stores with the intent of shopping the same item on e-commerce platforms. Um, and we saw pictures being taken of Lay's chips packets or PepsiCo bottles or even alcohol products, right? Um, and hence we approached the CPG manufacturers uh, to help them understand this is the behavior we are seeing in the market. 
how we can work together. And that's where they essentially um, told us that, look, today I don't understand how my products are actually positioned across a large number of retail stores. And if I have that data with me, I can very easily plug out of stock and overstocking problems. And that's where uh, we built the whole product, the whole tech platform where uh, you could take photos, you can empower and uh, enable sales reps of these CPG companies to just take photos inside the stores uh, and get to understand in-store on-shelf metrics and more importantly, fix the issues essentially uh, in real time, right? So uh, yeah, it's it's been an uh, interesting journey for us uh, to do a pivot, but find the right problem to solve. Got it. So this is a very large problem faced by retail industry today, right? Uh, can you tell us more about how you are solving it? What are the different products in your suite? Sure. So earlier, this problem was getting solved using manual audits, which means you send people to the store. These people have to spend uh, hours in front of the retail shelves to actually count the facings of the products uh, to extract metrics like share of shelf, on-shelf visibility, or planogram compliance, and so on and so forth, right? And now, if you see, we are bringing in a lot of automation through AI technology. And uh, there are various components to this AI technology, uh, right from the, the way we build our mobile applications, the way we do on-device AI, uh, the way we compress the photos and send them to cloud, do the processing, and get the insights back to the reps on the ground. Sometimes we do processing on the device itself because it helps these reps to take photos and then get results without even having internet connection. Um, and the same technology platform we have applied to enable different products. Today, we have three different products, which we call InfiViz, InfiArt, InfiI, and InfiLect, everything starts with Infi. So uh, we have three different products and uh, these essentially help our customers, which are essentially CPG retail customers. Uh, to either improve their sales or to improve their marketing, or even we work with large format retailers to help them understand how to identify shrinkages as uh, the customers essentially use checkout counters, right? So yes, we target uh, from sales to marketing to in-store operations when we work with our customers. Got it. Um, okay, so now my favorite part of the this discussion. Now that we know how customers might use Infilet, let's deep dive a bit into a user's journey. Can you please explain what happens when a store agent clicks an image on the shelf? Sure. So as I explained, uh, we have three different components uh, at broad level where we have mobile app for sales reps to take photos in the store. Uh, these photos are either processed on the device itself or uh, sometimes uh, they are uploaded to the cloud and then essentially process them in the cloud. And then we have an AI service in the cloud uh, which does a lot more uh, computations on these images. So uh, these three broad components come together to enable a real-time service where in the end for these reps, uh, it uh, looks like a magic to the end customers, right? Uh, and as soon as they take photos, they essentially get the response back where they understand how to fix, as I said, out of stock and overstocking. And that's essentially the a magic that uh, we are trying to enable. Now, if you zoom in in each of these components, and perhaps I'll take example of the web service as well as our AI service. So when you take a deep dive into the web service, uh, essentially, because we can get a lot of photos from a lot of different geographies, from a lot of stores, uh, there is a very key component of how do we ingest these images while balancing the load um, on our servers. And that's where uh, we make use of a lot of load balancing modules as a part of GCP platform. Now, once these photos are received by our web service, uh, we need to get these photos processed, if not, at least store them and retrieve them for anything that we need to do in future. And that's where we use 
cloud a pub sub kind of module uh, which make sure that these images are stored they are sincerely sent to our ai service uh, and uh, the whole automation bit is essentially kicked in and then uh, we use cloud sql uh, as well as bigquery because uh, in the end we have to generate value for our customers so uh, when these images are uh, processed and if you think about it if we get 50 million photos then from each image we are probably generating about 1000 different sample points right so it's a uh, huge data that we need to store that we need to make sense out of and we need to make actionable insights available to our stakeholders and that's where platforms like cloud sql or bigquery uh they essentially help us to manage the entire load right and now if you zoom into the uh ai service part where we need to get all of these images processed right um in our ai pipeline at any point in time we have anywhere between 1 to 50 models right the 1 to 50 deep learning based models which are essentially working in tandem and there too we have the same components that we have applied where load balancing or how do you make sure that the right a microservice is essentially getting the right kind of image to be uh, processed we extensively use kubernetes kind of platform because when we get very high load uh, we need to make sure that the whole compute module goes up and down uh, we essentially provision the right number of gpus to get the photos processed right so uh, there are a lot of these components like Kubernetes and GPUs that we use on the GCP platform that helps us to process these photos in real time and then eventually enable that whole experience of a magic to uh, our end customers. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you for taking us through that. I'm sure the journey to get here has its own ups and downs. Can you maybe highlight any challenges you might have faced as you went through your journey? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, anytime we need to enable this a magical experience, there are very hard technical problems that we need to solve. Uh, I can maybe talk about a three different problems. Uh, so one problem that we faced was how do we enable on-device AI, right? Because uh, not every phone comes with a very powerful uh, CPU or GPU, right? And uh, that's where we used TensorFlow-based systems where um, we could train uh, very small size but very accurate models that we deployed as a part of the Android applications. And uh, that really helped us uh, to enable experiences where uh, there are uh, many times, I mean, right from South Korea to US, I have seen that uh, there is not enough internet available to upload the photos. and uh, having these on device models essentially helps us to still give a good experience to consumers where they can see things happening in real time and yet uh, the entire processing is happening on the device itself second thing i can talk about is uh, we made use of uh, some of the beta services like vertex ai where uh, we made use of uh, the knowledge craft that is prepared by google uh, over probably last 25 years if not more uh, and that really helped us to understand how do we create master data of all the SKUs that are available across the world. Because in the end, any kind of AI works where you have to show it a, a reference pattern. And those kinds of reference patterns we could extract from uh, Google's uh, AI service. And uh, lastly, I would say there are a lot of Google uh, Cloud Vision APIs that we use which, which essentially augment uh, the kind of in-house IP that we are developing, right? So, uh, um, I mean, the challenges faced were right from how do we make use of low-end phones to enable on-device AI to how do we quickly identify uh, the entire product master for a customer to how do we rapidly customize our AI platform uh, to index all the SKUs of our customer, right? And in, um, you know, all of these challenges, uh, I must say that we have used some of the um, platforms and modules that Google has built and has 
generously made open uh, for a sort of like ours to make use of them. Always good to hear that. Thank you, Vijay, for sharing what happens behind the scenes. What can we expect to see from Infilect in near future? Well, there are a lot of uh, interesting product roadmap uh, that we have. Uh, you know, in the end, um, um, we want to make sure that uh, our platforms are always the fastest in the market to be set up, always the fastest to get the responses back to our uh, consumers. Uh, they also are affordable to our customers, which means uh, the more we invest as a part of uh, building uh, the core IP, the more it is going to be cost effective for our customers. Um, and there are several other uh, uh, products that we are developing. Uh, I only talked about InfiWiz as a product, but then there is InfiArt and then InfiI where we target uh, marketing as well as in-store operation divisions of our customers. So. Um, how do we apply the existing AI platform that we have built? How do we compound on that? And how do we enable different experiences for our customers? That's something that uh, we are quite keen on to get to market. Wow. We can't wait to see what you build next. Thank you, Vijay, for coming to our show. Where can our viewers go and learn more about Infilect? Oh, well, you can go to uh, www.infilect.com. Uh, uh, we have a lot of case studies for our customers. We have a lot of interesting blogs where uh, if you want to understand more about our product or about technology, uh, uh, you can get to uh, do so. Uh, since I have got opportunity, uh, if, you know, if you're looking at joining a startup uh, which is growing very fast in the market and solving very hardcore technical problems, uh, our doors are always open. We are hiring for all sorts of roles, uh, not just for engineering, but also for sales and marketing. Uh, so we would love to have you uh, as a part of our journey. Awesome. Thanks, Vijay. It was a pleasure to have you with us today. Hey, thanks, Manish. And thanks to Google. So the next time when you are doing your weekly shopping in the neighborhood grocery store to get your favorite snack, and you always find them stocked up there, thanks Vijay and his team at Infilex. If you like the content, please share and subscribe to our channel where we continue to bring you such awesome tech stories. Till the next episode, thanks for watching and take care. Bye.